You know, when I ice fish, I use a couple of different types of sonars. The one that's really important is when you're actually fishing and it has like a flasher screen, a, a, a round screen, and it shows you the real time signal. And we use those sonars when we want to mark the fish that are underneath our hole and also our lure. And then the relationship between the two of them, because a lot of the times you can actually work your lure to make the fish strike. But I also take a traditional fish finder out with me, like this one here. This is the hummingbird, it's called the 385CI. And the C is very important, it stands for color, and the I is important because it stands for internal antenna. Now the reason why this sonar is so important, you can use it for fishing, marking the bottom, the fish, and also your lure, but also for navigating and marking your spot. So right now, if you look on the screen, you can see that I have the map of Lake Simcoe on here, and you can see that we're on the west side, and I can see Fox Island and Snake Island on here, and the waypoints that I've marked. So by just pushing in on the plus sign, you can see that we zoom in, and you can see exactly where we've been fishing today, and we're very close to the break, where the water goes from about 70 to 90 feet of water. If I hit the view, you can see that I can go into a split screen. Now, I'm not reading the bottom because I, the transducer is here on this machine. It's not in the water. Well, you can see that I've got all different views here, zoom views and normal standard screen views, and also a flasher mode, but the most important is the one that shows the hydrographic chart. So whether I'm on a snowmobile or I'm on an ATV, if it's really tough navigating, I'll actually put this in front of me and I'll look at the screen because it's a GPS. So I can see where I wanna to get to, whether it's back to shore or out to my fishing spot, and it could be in the middle of the night or it could be in the middle of the snowstorm. I just have to go slow so I don't run into a shack or another machine, but I can see exactly where I'm going and get there very safely. You know, the nice thing about fishing out here on Lake Simcoe, you don't know what you're gonna get when you're fishing in deep water. We're targeting whitefish and lake trout, but a lot of time you can get ling, which is also called a freshwater barbet. You can get herring, which are very few and they've gotta be released. And some of them can be like up to a pound, a pound and a half. So this fish I marked on the hummingbird sonar and it hit really well. So this is the part where you gotta take it easy. We're using six, six inch holes and instead of bringing a power auger, we just went with the manual one because the ice isn't that thick. You can see the way this fish is head shaking. So this is either a cisco or a small white fish. Come on up, come on, look at that. It's a little white fish. And I hope that it's a natural reproduction. You know what it is, yay! What I'm gonna do is hold up this fish out of the water for just a little bit, and then I'm gonna let it go really quickly. Now that's a small Lake Simcoe whitefish. Most of the whitefish in Lake Simcoe are upwards of about two kilograms, which is about four and a half pounds. Now the reason this is a natural reproduction fish, or that I can tell, is because no fin is clipped. You see it's got all its fin? It's got its adipose, pelvis, pectoral fins. So it's a beautiful whitefish. It's a young one. I don't think this fish is more than maybe two or three years old, but he sure hit well. So I'm just gonna Hold him up real fast here, then I'm gonna get him back in the water. Look at that. This guy's more of the size of the whitefish that you get up north when you're fishing some of the Minden Halliburton lakes and even further north. Okay, so I won't hold him out of the water too long. Hopefully you got a good look at him. And I'm gonna slide him back in, and he's gonna take off. There he goes. Now the spoon that I used for that is uh, this fluttering spoon that you can see has uh, one treble hook and then two double hooks on each side. And the size is only about an inch and a half long, which represents one of the many forage fish that are here in the lake. And amongst those, the emerald shiner is probably the most common. There's also juvenile smelt. And some of the larger white fish that the fishermen are catching here, a lot of times when they cut them open, they'll have four or five inch smelts inside them. But that spoon will catch a variety of fish, even a big jumbo perch if he comes by. Fisher girl! If you're planning on going after large fish that eat smaller fish, one of the best baits you can use is live minnows. 
Now sometimes you can't find live minnows or you don't want to use live minnows. Well then you can use plastic grubs like the ones I'm holding here. Anywhere from an inch and a half, four inches, or uh, even in between. Now Kate's got a small four inch minnow on. Why don't you explain your rig, Kate? Sure, well this is about a four inch minnow attached to a small hook. It sits about a foot and a half above a weight. And this just prevents the minnow from getting stuck in the seaweed or the rocks. Here, let me show you. Okay. Wow, that looks like a real minnow. I like the way it stays up off the bottom. Nice action, see the way it's swimming? Looks just like a real minnow.